so good to see each one of you here with us this morning here at Dallas First Christian Church. If you're joining us online, we welcome you as well, as we know that the Spirit of God draws us together as one people wherever we may be. So we are welcome you, we welcome your presence and your participation here in worship. If you are joining us online, I encourage you to collect some communion elements that you might participate with us uh, later on in the service. Some bread, some drink that uh, we can remember together, participate together at the table of our Lord. Our opening prayer and opening psalm lead us into worship. And our opening psalm this morning is Psalm chapter 1. The psalmist writes, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbanks, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. But not so the wicked. They are like worthless chaff, scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Will you join me in prayer this morning? Gracious God, we do come this morning knowing that your presence is here with us, knowing that you lead us here to this place, knowing that it is your spirit that calls us together. Lord, as we worship here this morning, may you take our hearts and transform them, take our minds and renew them, and make us more like you each and every day. Lord, we ask that your hand and your uh, spirit just guide us. We ask that you transform us in ways that we can't even possibly imagine today. And we ask all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. sing the hymn, Be Thou My Vision. It's a hymn that reminds us that God is the vision of our lives. God provides that for us each and every day. Be Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, say that Thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking nor sleeping, thy presence my life. Be 
thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father and I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling and I with thee one. Be thou my battle shield, sword for the fire. Be thou my dignity, thou my delight. Thou my soul shelter, and thou my high tower. Raise thou me, heavenward, O power of my power. Riches I heed not, nor men tempt ye praise. Thou my inheritance, now and always. Thou my only first first in my heart. My King of heaven, my treasure thou art. My King of heaven, after victory won, may I reach heaven's joys, O bright and sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. As we come into our time of prayer this morning, uh, the song Control, it's a song that reminds us that um, God wants control of our lives. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later on in this service. Uh, but God wants control of our lives, and we can be faithful and confident in giving that control over to God because of God's unconditional love for us. Here I am All my intentions all my obsessions, want to lay them all down in your hands. Only your love is vital, so I'm not entitled till you call me your child. God, you don't need me. But somehow you want me, oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go. Oh, God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me, oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. I give you control. I've had plans shattered and broken. Things I have halted fall through my hands. You have plans to redeem and restore me. Behind and before me, oh, help me believe. Oh, God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go. Oh, God, you don't need me. Somehow you want me, oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. I give you control. You want me, 
Somehow you want me, King of Heaven wants me. So this world has lost its grip on me. You want me. Somehow you want me. King of Heaven wants me. So this world has lost its grip on me. God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go. Oh, God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. I give you control. This morning as we come into a time of prayer together, are there prayer requests that you would like to share? Are there joys that you would like to share with, with the uh, congregation who's gathered here this morning? Thank you. Uh, that's, it's amazing the way God works uh, to bring people together that we have no clue what those connections are. And um, uh, Dana reminds us to pray for those who uh, are in the middle midst of the war in, in Israel and to pray for the hostages, pray for those who are um, innocent civilians in the midst of all this, uh, to just lift them up and to hold them in prayer. We may not be able to be there physically, but we can be there through our prayers, and God's Spirit is there as well. Susan. prayers for Susan. Uh, she's had been having some issues with her eyes and has been referred to a retina specialist. Uh, whatever that specialist will, will recommend, you know, there'll have to be some decisions on what, what treatment will go forward. So we pray not only for the eyes specifically, but for wisdom and discernment uh, in, in next steps moving forward. got back last night from, from that. <laughs> so we, we, we give thanks for, for new birth and new life. Uh, it, it's always good to see new life come into the world uh, with that hope and that, uh, that excitement of that new birth brings. And some terror as well at, at, at times when new birth happens. Uh, but that's true, not only with a little baby, but with all kinds of new birth that happens. Others, I saw, uh, yeah, Amanda.
prayers for the Hale family after losing Jason suddenly, a 42-year-old son. Uh, so we pray prayers for them. Okay. Other prayers to share this morning. Let us go to our Lord in prayer as we lift up the needs of our hearts, our community, our church, and our world. Gracious God, we thank you for your your presence that is here with us. You encourage us to come to you in prayer, to bring those needs of our hearts. Uh, Nothing is too small to bring to you. And you welcome us as we do so. With open arms, with open hearts, you bring us to you that we might share with you our prayer, our prayers. Lord, we do lift before you those who are struggling with illness or facing surgeries and and procedures. Uh, Lord, we do pray for for Susan's eyes and the the issues she's having with with them, Uh, for Marcia's uh, upcoming procedure, for others, Lord, who are facing illness, who are facing procedures. uh, Lord, we lift before you Julie, who's having a, a major surgery this coming week. Lord, for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, uh, we pray for the Hale family. We pray, Lord, for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, even from times past. For grief changes, but does not entirely go away. So, Lord, we lift them before you and just pray for your comfort, your presence through family and friends and church, and through your spirit. Lord, we do pray for what's happening in the Middle East. The war that's happening uh, within Israel, Lord, we lift before you that just that whole situation. For those who have been taken captive, for the innocents who are in the middle of, of the war, for the leaders. Pray, Lord, that you'll give your spirit to show them a way to peace. And Lord, we continue to pray for uh, Russia and Ukraine war. We do pray, Lord, for peace there as well. That you will, in some way, uh, speak to the leadership and show them that way to peace. Lord, we pray for this community, uh, for all that's happening within our community and all that that we are wrestling with. We pray, Lord, for uh, this church, this congregation, that you will find, that you will show us how you're going to provide for us in ways that we can't even imagine right now. Lord, we hold before you our needs here at this church and know that you you hold us tight we pray for your vision we pray for your leading in all things and Lord we give you thanks for the many blessings for new birth for the excitement and the hope that is seen in new birth we pray Lord for the challenge, challenges that are ahead of, of them, the changes that new birth brings to families and churches and community. But Lord, most of all, we just celebrate that birth, knowing that you are present in all things. Lord, we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I want to share with you a scripture from the the book of Romans. It's one that that is probably familiar to us in in one way or another. Maybe you've heard it before. Uh, Well, I know you've heard it before if you've been here worshiping with us because we've used it before. 
So, but I want you to try to hear this for the first time. I know I've challenged you in, in that way before, but I want you to try to hear these words. To try to listen not only with your ears, but your heart. And hear what Paul is writing, not only to, to uh, his readers of that day, but to you and I here in 2023 as well. This is chapter 12, and we're going to, going to read verses 1 through 8. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not, have, do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy according to your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is encourage, if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then ge give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. May God add his blessing to the reading of the word this morning. Romans is often thought about as kind of Paul's grand letter. It's the longest of his letters. It um, has probably more of the deep theological messages uh, as compared to some of the other letters of Paul. Yet, as, as theological and as deep as it can be, Paul's letter to the Romans is absolutely practical as well. It's absolutely down to earth, hands on, this is where the rubber meets the road type of, of writing for us. And this is one of those passages that is exactly like that. He begins uh, chapter 12, what we call chapter 12, by telling us, reminding each one of us that the transformation of our mind is kind of the place to start. It's kind of the place where that new birth, that new creation, that new life begins. And he says to us that we have to transform our minds. We have to change our minds, change the way we think, change our attitudes, our beliefs. And as we do so, as we change these things, there will be a couple things that happen. First of all, this is our worship. This is the, um, as he says, this true and proper worship. It may not be coming to, to church on Sunday morning. It may not be sacrifices during that time period. It may not be rites and rituals. But it's the transformation that we are called to go through that new mind, new life, new creation, that is our spiritual, our true and proper acts of worship. Elsewhere in Scripture, God, God reminds us that all of these offerings and things that, that people bring are good and, and, and acceptable, but only if our hearts and our minds are right with God. And Paul's reminding us here of the same thing. The second thing that um, the transformation of our mind does for us is we are then able to better understand, better uh, know the will of God. We are better to, uh, we are, it is better for us to understand what God's will is. And how does that happen? 
How do we better understand the will of God when our minds are changed and transformed? Well, the more our mind is transformed, the more change that happens in our ways of thinking, in our ways of believing, in our attitudes, and things like that, if they are changed and transformed into be, to become more Christ-like, to become more godly, then we will be able to know the will and the thoughts of God better. You can kind of think of it as cleaning out your, your uh, pipes in your house. Oftentimes we have gunk that builds up in our pipes, don't we? It could be your sewer pipe, it could be your, your fresh water pipe, it, whatever the case might be. And sometimes it takes a little bit to clean those out. But when we do, the cleaner those pipes are, the better the water flows. The more our minds are transformed and changed and made new, the more we will be able to know God's will. It, it's like those pipes. It flows better to us because we don't have those things of this world that are, are blocking, clogging, distracting. And that is so vitally important for us because it is that in that next section that the rubber really does meet the road. Because Paul reminds us of that transforming mind, that transformed mind. And let me remind you again, it's not a once and done, one and done type thing. It's an ongoing, lifelong process. Because earlier in, in, the, in the, not the Gospel of Romans, in the book of Romans, Paul says, you know what, I still do the things that I don't want to do. And the things I don't want to do, do is what I do. And it's how important. How difficult is that? And we look at Paul and we say, you know, Paul's a great apostle. Yet he still struggled with those things. He still struggled with the things he shouldn't do. He was still going through that transformation. He was still going through that process. And he reminds you and I that we're going through that as well. And it's not our doing. It's not our own work that does it. It's by the mercy and the grace of God. But then he talks to us about where things really get messy, can get messy, where the rubber meets the road. Where he says, you are part of a body. And he uses this image elsewhere in his writings. You are part of a body. And you have a gift. You have a purpose. You have a specific role in that body of Christ. And you are called to fulfill that role. You are called to do and serve and be according to your gifts. And he lists some of them here. This is by no means an exhaustive list. It says if you, if you have the gift of prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. You know, we had a, a good discussion in our men's Bible study about what prophecy was. Oftentimes we think of prophecy as predicting the future. Jesus is going to come back on October, let's see, there's the 15th, so we'll give it the 20th. Say October 20th of this year. That could be a prophecy. I don't think it's true, but it could be a prophecy. And Scripture tells us that for prophets, if they're predicting the future, then they've got to get it right or it's not of God. But prophecy is not just about predicting the future. If you look at the prophets of the Old Testament, those prophets at times predicted the future, but most of the time they were the ones who were giving the word of God to the people. Sometimes it was a word of, you're doing the wrong thing, guys. You're not taking care of those in need. You're not worshiping. You're not doing the things God's called you to do, and because of that, watch out, because there's going to be some punishment. But also the word of God that says, hey, I've seen your suffering, 
I'm seeing your struggle, and I'm here. Words of comfort, words of encouragement, words that say, remember me, return to me. And how important it is for us even today to hear those words. But if you're a prophet, you've got to be careful what you say and how you say it. It says if your gift is serving, then serve. When we are called as Christians to serve, we are all called as Christians to serve. But there are those who have a gift of serving and can serve deeper, stronger, longer, in more ways than an average person. That is their gift. It's very similar in ways of giving. We're all called to give. But there are some who have that gift of giving and can give sacrificially. So you can give more than what may be normal. You can give in ways that a normal person can't. And Paul lists many of those other gifts, not only here, but in other writings that he has. And he says to us, get your mind transforming. Get it changing, get it adjusting, get it moving so that it's open to what God has called you to do and moving away from what the world says. Then you will not only know God's will, but you will also be able to serve and exercise your gifts in ways that help the body of Christ to function properly. Each one of you this morning has gifts that you are called to use. Each one of you is part of the body of Christ. And as you exercise your gifts, as you use your gifts in the body of Christ, we become more healthy. We become stronger and able to function in ways that show God's grace and God's glory and God's presence in more ways than one. If you think of your own body for a minute, you have lots of different pieces, parts. And each one has a different, different role. Elsewhere, Paul tells us that some of those uh, lesser body parts somehow can be the most important. And when one body part hurts, even if it's a small one, your whole body hurts. Think of the uh, middle of the night when you stub your toe on the bed frame or the, 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 the dresser. Your whole body kind of hurts at that point, doesn't it? I knew a gentleman at a previous church who suffered with diabetes very significantly. And because of that, he lost some of his toes. And we wouldn't think that losing a toe would be significant. Yet, it affects the way you walk. It affects your balance. Something small and insignificant makes a huge deal within our physical bodies. The gifts and the service that each one of us brings. We may think it as insignificant. We may think it's not the big, upfront, loud, powerful gift. But it's those small things that can make the biggest difference. It's those small ways of serving, of loving, of giving grace that can make the biggest difference. So this is what I want to leave with you this morning. First of all, check where you, your mind is this morning. Is your mind clouded, clogged with fears, with uncertainties, with anger? Or is your mind being transformed through the mercy and the grace of God? Are you so focused on what the world says, upon what the world is around you, that you cannot hear God's voice or sense God's presence 
Or is your mind opening up to where God's calling you? To where God wants you to be? And again, that is a process. But as you check where your mind is, where that transformation is happening, I want you to also check how you are serving and using your gifts. You may not know what your spiritual gifts are, how you've been gifted, and that's okay right now. And there are ways to, to explore what those might be. And if you're, if you're wondering, see me after worship or catch me sometime later, and we can work on those. But what I want you to understand is this. You are vitally important, not only in the life of this congregation, but in the life of the church as a whole. This congregation is vital and important to the church in Dallas. We often talk about the one church in Dallas, and every church is important in that, in that body. And you and I are part of that body and are important as we serve, as we grow, and as we look toward God, what God is doing in the midst of our lives. I'm going to close with uh, just reading verses 1 and 2 again of this, of this passage. I want to read it to you from the message translation and see how this just makes a difference to you. So here's what I want you to do. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, going to work and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. So take your everyday life, take the things you do each and every day, and place it before God. Focusing on what God wants for you and where God's calling you, and respond to it. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for your, just your presence here with us. We thank you that it is through you and in you that we live each day. And God, I pray a special, just a special prayer this morning for each, uh, each of us here that we will take our everyday lives, no matter where we go, to work, to the store, to school, uh, to home, to, to the park, to the restaurant, wherever we go, Lord. And may we lay it before you. And may we look to see where you are and where you're calling us to do and be. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our communion hymn this morning, as we prepare for communion, and Audrey will come up and lead us in just a moment in, in communion, is, is the song, the hymn, I Surrender All. It's a hymn that reminds us that we surrender everything we are. We give everything we are back to God in ways that make a huge difference in our lives.
Susan, are you? They'll get it fixed. There you go. There we go. Okay. Well, you know, in my years as a Bible teacher, one thing I did, stand on the corner up there on Levens across from Lyle School and hold out a flag and stop the cars for the kids to come across. Well, one day when I'm standing waiting, I wasn't in the middle of the road, a gravel truck came woo, really fast around the corner hit the car that had seen me, Nancy Austin from our church, sitting there in her car and hit her and shot her through the intersection. Oh, wow, I thought. Um, luckily, the kids weren't here. They were late that day. I believe God intervened with us. But I thought, now what would I do? What would I do if a car came there? And so I pictured myself in my mind that I could on top of children. I could throw myself out there if a car came when it wasn't supposed to. I could do that. I could be a sacrifice. Well, in 25 years, I never had to do that. And so, but um, I pictured that I could do it. You know, probably you've had similar things happen in your life. You pictured what you could do for your children. You know, if a, a ram is coming to hit one of your kids, you just stand in front of that ram, right? Sean and Brian, we've all done that. <laughs> well, God calls us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. And when you think of a sacrifice, you think of a sacrificial lamb. People um, in the Holy Lands, this terrible war, People have thrown themselves in front of other people, covered them with their body, and, and been a sacrifice to save them. Well, the ultimate sacrifice was our Savior on that cross and what he endured for us. You know, I thought about that. Um, someone who came up and slapped him, he was the king of kings. He was there when the world was formed. And someone spit on him and slapped him and made a crown of thorns to poke on his head so blood flowed down. You think, what kind of people were those? Well, in our daily lives, when we aren't serving God, worshiping him and honoring him, we're one of those. It humbles us, doesn't it? And as we take our communion today, let's not take this lightly. Let's remember that so sacrifice that was made for us. And we're called to be a living sacrifice. I had to wrap my mind around that. I didn't get called upon to, to get struck by a car and save a child. But I'm called upon to live a life pleasing to God so that others, I need to serve others. That's my living sacrifice. So as we leave here today, I think we're called upon to be those living sacrifices. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you that you had this wonderful plan where Jesus sacrificed himself and rose from the dead and lives so that we can live also. And help us as we leave here today to be living sacrifices for you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. As we come to the table this morning, we are reminded of Christ's sacrifice. Uh, we're also reminded of how he has called us to be new creations and to take uh, 
his love and grace out to others. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, as he met with his disciples over dinner, he gathered a loaf of bread from the table, and he held it before his disciples, all 12 of them. And he said, this bread is my body, which is given for you. Whenever you eat it, remember me. And he passed this loaf around, and all 12 of them ate. He then took a cup from the table, and again, he blessed it. And he said to them, this cup represents the new covenant of my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sin of those 12 sitting around the table, of my sin, of your sin, of the sin of the world, the brokenness of the world, what this cup, this covenant the sacrifice covered. So as you come this morning, I want to invite you to, to remember those things. You are invited to come forward in just a moment and take a piece of bread and dip it in the cup. You can use the little uh, prepackaged communion supplies as well. If you're online with us, I encourage you to use what you have at home because it is important because all are welcome to the table. All are welcome in the kingdom and in the body of Christ. So come as you are led this morning to remember what Christ has done. transforming of our minds. Change, one of the things the transforming of our minds does is it takes our minds from that focus on scarcity to one of abundance and generosity. As we come to our offering time this morning, I hope that you will begin that transformation, begin that, that change of heart and mind uh, from one that says, I gotta hold on to what I got. I can't let it go. To one of generosity and giving. One that says, God's going to supply, God's gonna take care of not only me and my family, but our church as well. And each one of us here is part of that. Each one of us here is part of the giving, part of the gifts that we give each Sunday as part of our worship. Our offering box is in the back as you leave this morning. It's back there. Uh, you can put your, your offerings in that box. If you're online or would like to give online, go to our website at dallasfirstcc.com, and you can give through a link there as well. Uh, but our offerings are important. Our offerings are what has uh, provided for us. 
And through God's grace and God's mercy in each one of our lives, we can continue to give as well. Uh, let's say a prayer over our, our offerings together as we continue in worship this morning. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the provision and gifts that you have provided us within our lives. We offer up these gifts to you, use them for your glory, and to share your love and grace to our community and world. We continue to pray for your leading and provisions in our lives and church. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. A couple of announcements, or several announcements as we continue this morning. Women's Bible study will meet at 9.30 on Wednesday morning here in the church. And we encourage ladies as you can to come and be a part of that. Men's Bible study will meet at 8.30 on Thursday morning here in the church. And uh, we encourage all the men if, as you can to come and be a part of that as well. Uh, prayer brochure and family visitor, the newest uh, editions are in the back. I think the prayer brochure is, is brand new this week. Or was that, that was last week. Last week, okay, but it's still relevant. And uh, there's updates in the bulletin as well. And we continue our Wednesday and Friday Zoom prayer and check-ins for all those who would like to be a part of that. Um, congregational meeting on October 22nd, which is next Sunday, following worship. We encourage all members to be part of that as we elect, uh, further elect our officers for the coming year. And then fifth Sunday potluck on October 29th, following worship, which is two weeks from today. And um, I just want to let you all know that I have been guaranteed that there will be lots of good desserts there. So we encourage you to come and enjoy the dessert. Uh, if you can get ahead of Jim Holman and I uh, to get to those desserts, uh, that would be a good thing. They're not here this morning, but that's okay. We like, we like the desserts portion uh, as well as the other stuff as well. So uh, we do have a couple of birthdays. Oh, well, just real quick, uh, fill the cart. We had 60 pounds of food and other things in, for the food bank this past week. Uh, once again, a variety of, of things, from canned foods to toiletries to cereal, all sorts of different things. And the food bank is always ecstatic to, to receive those. So thank you for your generosity in, in bringing that, uh, not only this month, but, but every month as well. We do have a, a couple of birthdays uh, that we'll look at after the, the loneliest number here. I'm going to get to the birthdays. I will. <laughs> uh, we've been asked to provide 250 cans of corn for the Dallas Food Bank Thanksgiving basket. And uh, we start out with the, the one, the loneliest number up there. And we're up to uh, needing 189 more. And we're piling them up here on the platform. So you can kind of see, see them up there. Uh, but we encourage you to bring a, a case, a single can, whatever you'd like to do. And we'll keep updating the numbers as we, as we go along. Because uh, it's important that we do that uh, to help not only uh, monthly with the Dallas Food Bank, but these are special Thanksgiving baskets that they put out as well. So we do have a couple of birthdays in the congregation this coming week. Ross, your birthday is coming up this week. Today, okay. Happy birthday. And Renee, your birthday is coming up tomorrow, if I, re if I remember right. So let's sing happy birthday to Ross and Renee this morning. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Okay, I can guarantee it's not mine, but if, if somebody lost a sil silver earring, uh, Susan's got it if you want to look at it and to check and see if it's yours. So. Are there any other announcements that I've forgotten about? Oh, the Advent devotionals, yes. Thank you. Uh, Hope We Kindled is our theme for Advent. And we'll be talking about that during Advent. For those who don't know, Advent are the four Sundays that precede Christmas Day. So it'll start on the first Sunday in December this year. And we're focusing on that theme of Hope We Kindled. There's... Uh, devotional guides that have gone out, either by email. I, do we have hard copies here? Hard copies back there. And I want to encourage each one of you to, to take some time and write a, a short devotional. It could be a, a, a scripture on hope or on Christmas. You could do a poem. You can do a, a paragraph. You can do a story. Uh, you can do song lyrics. You can do a lot of different things. And then a short prayer. And then we publish those uh, so we have one each day through that season of Advent. Uh, it's a great way for you to be creative. It's a, it's a wonderful way for you to share stories and to share different parts of your history 
uh, around Christmas, around hope, around uh, those types of theme, themes. So we encourage you to be a part of that. So pick up a, a brochure if you haven't gotten one yet uh, and so that you can be thinking about that. They're due de- November 10th. So you've got, you've got a couple weeks, several weeks yet. But we encourage you to bring them as a hard copy or email them into the church. So, would you stand for our closing song this morning? Micah 6 8 tells us uh, what does the Lord require of you to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? This song was written by a gentleman down at Eugene First Christian Church. It's called Walking with Thy God. So, as we leave, let us go forth and walk with God. Go for it. Pray for every nation and to honor all creation. This is walking with thy God. To do justice and love mercy, provide water to the thirsty. This is walking with thy God. He has shown me. He has shown me, He has shown me what is good. He has shown me, He has shown me, He has shown me what is good. To forgive and be forgiven. To make earth more like heaven, this is walking with thy God. To to care for one another, every sister, every brother, this is walking with thy God. He has shown thee. He has shown me, He has shown me what is good. He has shown me, He has shown me, He has shown me what is good. Put that head into a war. To make plowshares out of sword. This is walking with thy God. Let the peace of God inside you. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. This is walking with thy God. He has shown thee. He has shown me, He has shown me what is good. He has shown me, He has shown me, He has shown me what is good. Turn your back on greed and hatred. Cherish every life as sacred. This is walking with thy God. See every, everyone as equal, as God's children, as God's people. This is walking with thy God. He has shown thee. He has shown me, He has shown me what is good. He has shown me, He has shown me, He has shown me what is good. May you go forth and walk with God each day. May you put everything of each day before God as your worship, as your transformation. Now go in peace. Amen.